Hello and welcome everybody to 1969. In 1969, Jack Nicholas was at the Masters and he tied for 24th place. That's Jack Nicholas the Great. Tied for 24th. So remember, kids, we see in this culture where it's raw, raw, winner, winner, winner. In order to get there, you have to lose a lot. In golf, it's more than 80%. 90% of the time, you could be losing. It's just those opportunities you have, the chance you're going to go win. And that's, you know, what makes people great. So remember, losing is okay. Don't get too upset about it. All the greats did it. And then they rise above, okay? And in 1969 as well, speaking of rising to the occasion, Titleist comes out with their first set of irons. Titleist by Kushnet. Kushnet comes out with their first set of Titleist irons here. And they put this little red headphone right here. Why are there headphones right there? I think that's because sometimes it's okay to celebrate victories. Like here in Wisconsin, we're still celebrating victories. Giannis, Giannis right here. Who won in 20, I can't remember who won in 2021. Who won the NBA national champion? I can't remember. If I could put my finger on it, I'd tell you, but I just can't remember. In fact, I can't remember so much. I think we need to uh, do a little Titleist headphone celebration, don't you think? We can identify it on the aft portion very easily. Some red headphones in a gold circle. Titleist in script. Look at the straight muscle. I love a straight muscle back. By in script and then a kushnet just kind of stamped out. That's kind of weird change in font right there. But whatever. It's not, you know, on a computer or anything, so let them do what they want. I don't see any offset here, heel profile. The sole has the iron number six. Toe profile, you can see the muscle. Uh, it's kind of a weird angle they got there on the top of the toe. Looking at a dress, you know, you can see the grooves with these diamond embellishments on either side of it. And I, I, this rounding around the edge looks weird. It looks like, you know, your Uncle Joe with like a file. <laughs> I'm hogging off tons of material here. Joe, is it even? <laughs> yeah, almost. You mean no? No, Joe. All right. So we get Joe with a file, and then we have like beautiful machine stamping. Joe with a file, machine stamp. Moving on, you can see the shaft is pinned right here. We have this nice little, I don't even know what you would call it, knurling, I guess. And then we have a gold, black, copper, is that bronze, copper? Let's say copper, black, copper, so a dual copper ring. Feral right here, look at this aluminum shaft. What is it? Aluminum, R, 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 R. Aluminum rocket, not just aluminum, aluminum rocket. A Kushnet branding by True Temper. True Temper aluminum shaft. Uh, this is my sticker, just to remind me the year. And then we have this, this. This grip, pro only grip. What does it say here? Golf Pride Classic DTA made in the USA. And that is how you identify the, what does it say here, 1969. I already forgot. 1969, Titleist by Akushnet, bladed iron, their first irons. Let's get this out on the range and see how we feel about it. Titleist by Akushnet, 1969. Are you kidding me? Look at this thing. It's a blade from Titleist with an aluminum shaft. Let's see how it looks. I'm excited. Okay, so first thing I notice, the grip is old and slick. Oh wow, this is a different look. So let me explain what I'm looking at here. Wow, I'm surprised. So there's a lot of rounding around the top edge and the toe, and that jumps out at me. Like it is noticeable. It creates quite a line there of reflecting the sky. It's pretty interesting. And the other thing is the shaft is also kind of this matte gray, which contrasts this shiny chrome head. It's surprising how much that makes a difference in appearance. That and the grip, eh, we'll see what happens. What are we expecting? The usual draw? Let's have a look. 
yeah, there's a slight, well, it kind of started to draw and the wind kind of was like, no, we're just gonna hold you up. Got good distance on it, I mean, it felt amazing. All right, what do we have here? Oh dear, this is a Titleist. This is a Titleist DT Solo that somebody has donated to the range. Let's see how the Titleist flies. Titleist ball with a Titleist golf club. What could possibly go wrong? That had great carry. Easily carried 160, probably rolled out to 170. Wow. Six iron, yep, six iron, we got it. Beautiful. What's not to love about these old blades? I mean, it's a different look, which I really appreciate, you know? Sometimes so many clubs look so similar at a dress. This one looks different. I don't know if that's good or bad. You'll have to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But yeah, I mean, I can hit this straight and far and gives good feedback. What's not to love about these things? Titleist, wow. Brilliant. I'm impressed. Just such a different look. Titleist by Akushna. Let me know your thoughts and memories. So on the range, this felt amazing. It sounded good. It felt good. It's perfectly capable of doing whatever I need it to do. Okay. I have no complaints about the first Titleist irons. Okay. I mean, they're wonderful. But let's go back to some of the issues here. Okay. Aluminum shaft. You know, I can live with an aluminum shaft. Not ideal. Uh, my experience is they can break in transit, travel, they're more sensitive to like being thrown around an airplane or a car or a bus. And the head, okay? So there are some imperfections with the head. You saw on the close-up, the toe, you know, isn't perfect. And something that really started to change, I would say Ben Hogan was an industry leader in this, was the refinement of clubs. That's a change that you saw happen 50s, 60s, 70s, all the way, they're just trying to get more and more refined all the way today where you're looking for very consistent clubs. Like this, uh, in this set, you grab a seven iron out of one set, you grab a seven iron out of another set, and there will be subtle differences that you can notice just looking at it. You take Mizuno nowadays, or Titleist, speaking of Titleist nowadays, you grab two blades from two different sets and you look at them, they're gonna look exactly the same because they've really refined the manufacturing process here. So, that said, is that a bad thing? Everybody's gonna have a different answer. I really like the handmade look. And if you guys, for the people who know me, my other channel I review poker chips, all right? And so we talk about poker chips. There's lots of hand work that goes into these. They cut out strips of clay material and replace it with this colored material. And if you look, you can see all these imperfections, like they're different thicknesses, and when they get compressed, they're going to compress at different ways, and so every individual chip, even though they are produced in huge lots, is going to be individually different. Is that a bad thing? Here's a Jack Casino, a Jack Cincinnati Casino, and if you look at the edge spots, they're all different sizes. You know, they go to different depths sometimes. They're just wonderfully made. This is a Paulson brand chip made lots of the Las Vegas Strip casinos use Paulson brand. This is a classic poker chip. There are still card rooms today. It was formerly ASM and casinos have used this brand of poker chip as well. Again, there's hand work that goes into these and I think it's lovely. I love that each chip is an individual. With golf clubs, I love that as well. That's an error that I miss. Sorry, Ben Hogan. I, I mean, I am a big fan of Ben Hogan irons as well. They're absolutely lovely and they're wonderful, but that's something that I miss. Now, is that good for your golf game? And this is where there's kind of this like divergence, like, yeah, well, the center of gravity on all and every individual set with every individual individual iron is not gonna be precisely to the nanometer. The center of gravity is not gonna be in exactly the same place. Well, does it really matter? How precise are you? you? Can you, you know, find that sweet spot? Can you find the center of gravity? Do you send, do you CG track? Do you center of gravity track? Your clubs, most people do, all right? So, ugh, do you want really refined clubs that are gonna help your golf game or do you just want really awesome clubs that are made by hand, made in the USA? I don't have an answer for you, I will take both. However, there is something really endearing about this club and this set that I really, really love. I want a set of these just to play, just to have as a bladed set. 
right now my favorite bladed set is that I own the complete set of is the Arnold Palmer True Matic. This was when it was still a Proline brand before they sold out to Sears. But the True Matic irons were absolutely stunning. I love those irons. And these are a close second at the moment. Everything's subject to change, but when it comes to just like favorite blades, I would take a classic set of these Titleists over like a brand new, what are they selling for now? $2,000 Mizuno set. I have no idea how much they're selling for now. Because I love this character that they have. And that might, that might just be, be me being nostalgic. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Titleist by Akushnet. Are you a Titleist fan? I'm a huge Titleist fan. There are some things that they make that I just don't like. There are some things that they make that I love. This is one of the things that they made that I absolutely love and should be remembered. Thank you everybody for watching. A huge shout out to my patrons. I really appreciate all your support. On Patreon I offer general support, which means I post a few behind the scenes pictures and updates. You can also support this channel on my Amazon shop. I'll put a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. Thank you everybody for watching. I am The Vintage Golfer.